Something I struggle to understand about this community is why we try and predict the next World Drivers Champion. Because at the end of the day, almost everyone's hat is thrown into the ring. There's Max Verstappen, who... I picked Charles Leclerc, who could be world champion provided Ferrari stopped being themselves. Hell, to put a spin on things, even Bad Santa has picked out Nikita Mazepin for future glory. But of course, the talk of who will be the next world driver's champion will invariably include a man who currently spearheads Williams' futile attempt to gain points, George Russell. Oh wait, shit, wrong one. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. George Russell, the 23-year-old Brit who is touted for future glory, namely with the Mercedes outfit, which has currently been led by Sir Lewis Hamilton and the janitor. But there are going to be naysayers out there that will claim that the hype is overblown and the support for Russell is merely the popular thing to do. But of course, as with any driver who has the legend of John Henry's hammer on their side, what I wanted to know was whether this had some merit or if it's total bullshit. So let's find out which one is which with George Russell. Like most young racing drivers, Russell grew up with the ambition of becoming a Formula 1 driver. Cute, but hey, it's kind of impossible, given the vast amounts of wealth and know-how required to get to that level. Not to mention that even if you had all of that, you've got to have at least a modicum of talent to match. Unless you're... But after winning a slew of accolades in karting, Russell would begin his ascent through the motor racing ranks when he made his car racing debut in the Formula Renault Alp series. He finished P4 in the standings, which was pretty good actually. And he would also dominate the season finale in the Formula Renault Euro Cup in a one-off appearance at Jerez. Although his crowning glory that year would come in the British F4 series, where he won the title of a teammate Arjun Maini. He hung around in the European F3 series for a couple of years, before eventually making the switch over to the GP3 series for 2017. Driving at ART Grand Prix, his teammates would be Narei Fukuzumi, Jack Aitken, and Antoine Hubert. A solid lineup, but he aced it. Winning the title by almost 80 points over Aitken, which was larger than the deficit from Aitken to 9th place. Around the same time, Russell would be drafted into the Mercedes Junior Driver Program. He would take part in numerous tests with the team, and would also partake in an FP1 program at the Brazilian and Abu Dhabi Grand Prix with Force India. Russell's Formula 1 ambitions were beginning to take shape at a rapid rate. His GP3 title victory meant that Russell would make the step up to Formula 2, once again driving for ART and again alongside Aitken, for 2018. After a somewhat rocky start to the season, Russell would take his first win in the Baku sprint race with a commanding performance. Before season's end, it was announced that Russell had signed a multi-year deal with Williams to drive in the Formula 1 World Championship from 2019 onwards. But before that came about, Russell would win six more races that year to clinch the Formula 2 Championship in fight style over Lando Norris and Alex Albon. So Russell's junior career was pretty stellar. Few other drivers have achieved as much in their junior careers as what he did. At least in recent times anyway. His position on the Formula 1 grid was beyond question. But of course, as we've seen with other drivers, success in junior formula doesn't guarantee you success once you hit the big stage. So, how has Russell done since entering the main game? Well, his debut came at the Australian Grand Prix in 2019. His teammate would be Robert Kubica, who was a little bogged down by the fact he kind of only had half a hand. Regardless, he was still a damn good driver. But the main issue for everyone involved that year was not the potential for inter-team friction but with the car itself. Ever since 2015, the Williams outfit had been on a gradual decline. Well, when I say gradual decline, it fell like a f***ing anvil. So both drivers were going to have to try and deal with a car significantly slower than the rest of the field. But for Russell at least, he still had a teammate to race against. By the end of qualifying on Saturday, Russell had out-qualified Kubica by almost two seconds, which is an insane figure to wrap around your head by today's standards. Obviously, this was a one-off. Although having said that, not once did Kubica out-qualify Russell during the year. Russell was the only driver in the field to have a 100% qualifying battle record over his teammates. Even with how notorious Sir Lancelot isn't in qualifying, at least he outqualified Checo once in a blue moon. During the races, Kubica used his experience to claw back some of the deficit over his teammates. And this worked to his aid at the German Grand Prix when both Alfa Romeos were disqualified for some reason, Kubica would score the team's sole points that year, finishing in 10th while Russell finished on behind. There would be times where Russell would get close to the points throughout the year, with some performances that made a lot of us think, how the hell are you doing this? But ultimately, the German Grand Prix was a one-off occurrence thanks to the high rate of death. <laughs> Collectively, Russell was worlds ahead of Kubica throughout the year. Not that it left a stain on Kubica's character, but for a lot of people, Russell was beginning to emerge as a potential future star. 2020 comes around and the end of the world is happening. Although once away was found to stay 
start the Formula One season, Russell rocked up to the first round, still driving for Williams, although this time he would be partnered with King Latifi. The Williams that year was still slow, although prospects were slightly more promising than the year before. After retiring from the first race after a loss of fuel pressure, he would break out of Q1 and qualifying for the next Grand Prix and put his Williams in P11. But at the end of the day, there's only so much you can do with the Williams. Racing with these things is like having one hand tied behind your back while your other hand is Robert Kubitz's. Race pace was wretched for the Williams cars and so most of the time, all that Russell could hope for was carnage up ahead so that he can pick up the scraps. In Belgium, he had a frightening crash after colliding with a stray wheel thanks to Italian Jesus. He ran extremely well in Mugello, only to fall back when it counted. And at Imola, he was running in the points until he wasn't. Turkey 2 was a pretty average affair. But like I said, there's only so much you could do with a Williams in 2020. Gone were the days where they developed cars, but even maniacs could take to victory lane. If only Russell could drive a more competitive car, like say, a Mercedes, for at least one race, so that he could prove his worth. Formula One champion Lewis Hamilton has tested positive for coronavirus. Formula One world champion Lewis Hamilton has tested positive for COVID-19 and will miss this weekend's Sakir Grand Prix on the Bahrain Outer Circle. The most circuit. recent, of course, is that Mercedes need a new driver, and that driver is sat over there. It's George Russell. Okay. Which grant today, eh? Russell would steer the Mercedes in the Sakir Grand Prix after Sir Lewis Hamilton had fallen ill. He said he felt no pressure heading into the weekend, despite the fact that his teammate would be a fearsome, hard charger who would never back down from a fight and would fight tooth and nail for every scrap. Oh, who am I kidding? It was this guy. Toto Wolf said that he expected Russell to plant the car in the top five that weekend. And immediately from the get go, Russell was right on pace. Regardless of past experience, to jump out of a Williams car that he had driven all year into a Mercedes against a guy that had driven this thing all year. To be doing this was pretty special. Qualifying swung by, and Russell would only just lose out to Bottas in qualifying by 26 milliseconds, which incidentally was how long Mazepin lasted in his first race. The green flag dropped and Russell shot into the lead. He would lead most of the race until lap 63, which was kind of ironic, when they brought him in for a fresh set of tyres. Trouble was, Merck had fitted the front tyres from Bottas's car onto Russell's one. This meant, among other things, that he was forced to pit again so that the error could be rectified. This put him behind Bottas on the resumption of the race. Down in fifth place, but he wouldn't stay there for very long. Through turn four, Russell's now going to have a go at him on this twisty section of the track, the middle section. He's got the inside line at turn seven and he goes past his teammate. George Russell overtakes... So after disposing of the easy pickings, Russell proceeded to chase after Checo Perez for the win until a slow right rear puncture ruined any chance of that. He put on a fresh set of softs, ran around for the remaining few laps, getting the fastest lap in the process as well as his first points in Formula One. But after having convincingly outdriven Bottas throughout the entirety of that race. He more than made his point. The result, while disappointing, meant little in the grand scheme of things. After Sir Lewis recovered in time for the last race of the season, Russell was relegated back down to Williams, and it seemed sad to know that someone of his caliber would no longer be fighting in amongst the Mercedes. Or at least you would think that. What you're seeing here is George Russell, still in a Williams in 2021, fighting Valtteri Bottas, who somehow is still in a Mercedes in 2021. And what you're about to see here is a really big crash. Blame was apportioned either way, but this incident really was a case of which motor racing experts describe as shit happens. In the end, neither of them got hurt, but one has to wonder not why Russell had crashed into Valtteri, but why Valtteri found himself battling a Williams. More recent performances include just missing out on Q3 in Portugal, further proving that Russell is dragging the most out of that car. At this point, one has to wonder what more he has to do to prove to Toto Wolf that he is D-Way. And I'm going to drop two cents here real quick. First things first, Valtteri on his day is blind bloody fast. There's been a lot of times where he outperformed Sir Lewis, and that is no mean feat by any stretch of the imagination. He definitely earned his Mercedes seat with some outstanding performances at Williams. But aside from Bottas 2.0, where he seemed to have found a new lease of life within himself, there has been a relative lack of fight compared to, say, Nico Rosberg against Sir Lewis. I, along with anyone who loves racing, wants to see Sir Lewis pushed in that Mercedes seat. We saw that in his fight with Rosberg, and while it wasn't particularly healthy for the Merc men watching, it was a damn good watch for the rest of us, and it made both of them into better drivers. 
I think. And we had a world championship where you didn't really know who would win between them. Whereas Bottas' championship fights barely last four rounds and defense from his teammate with this sort of energy. Stop, don't come back. Now, Lewis Hamilton is one of the greatest drivers to walk this planet and the best driver of his generation. Regardless of whether or not he has the best car, beating him in anything will be hard as hell. But seeing what Russell could do in that Mercedes versus what Bottas can't do in that thing, it angers me and a lot of people in the motor racing world. But unfortunately, the Hamilton Bottas combo is exactly what Mercedes want. They don't want inter team friction again. They want wins. Surefire ones that aren't likely to be lost due to naive bravado. I'm sure Volti would gladly say, to whom it may concern, f you in his next race victory, but that won't change anything. I started off this video talking about all those drivers that have been discussed as potential future world champions. Verstappen could very well win it this year. Leclerc could do it too if Ferrari progressed up the spectrum. Hell, even Sir Lancelot could do it one day. As crazy as it may seem, anything can happen in Formula 1, and it usually does. With Russell, he has all the hallmarks of a driver with immense future potential. Results may tell you one thing, but for those of us that, you know, watch the racing, that have seen this kid from his beginnings in car racing, right up to burning Bottas and Bahrain. Know that this kid is special. We need to see Russell in a Mercedes. We need to see him challenge Sir Lewis. We need to see excitement in the title fight, which is exactly why it won't happen. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Drop a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you're awesome, and always remember, keep it respectful, be wholesome, don't be a manus, and as always, I'll see you all later.